Okay, now that you've made your memory dump, it's time for you to actually start going through the test. What I want you to do now is to pause the video here. You're going to go through the test. I want you to interact with the questions and the answers using your notes and your memory dump. When you finish, go back through the test and follow along with this video to check for your understanding. This is the study guide for air pressure, winds, and weather. Which has the greatest effect on wind speed? Which has the greatest effect? Now that might mean that these all have some kind of effect on wind speed, but what has the greatest effect on wind speed? Now for me, I'm going to kind of go back to my memory dump here. Sorry about going through all these, which I could go through it slower than that. Let's see here. Um, unequal heating of the land and high pressure to low pressure. So changes in pressure and changes in temperature. Let's see here. Changes in temperature, changes in, hmm, oh yeah, air pressure. That's like the example we used in class of of the balloon. I remember when we blew the balloon up there was great air pressure and on the outside was low pressure and the more I blew the balloon up the harder the air came out of it when I let it go. Um, precipitation really doesn't make sense. Wind direction doesn't really affect wind speed. Cloud cover could change the temperature but I think air pressure has the greatest impact on wind speed. Why do most weather systems in the United States move from west to east? Now I remember writing this, I remember talking about this. West to east, something moved west to east. Um, here it is, west to east is the prevailing westerlies. That's in my memory dump. All right. Why do most weather the west coast is at higher elevation and weather systems go downhill? I never talked about that in class. Prevailing winds carry weather systems to the east across most of the United States. I like that one because that sounds like the prevailing westerlies. The west coast is warmer and weather systems move from warmer to colder places. No, that doesn't make sense. The mountain ranges prevent the movement of weather systems from east to west. Well, I mean, I know there's mountains in Boone, and a lot of times the rain moves right over those mountains. It comes right to our home, so that doesn't make sense. This says prevailing, and I remember learning about the prevailing westerlies. So I'm thinking that is my best answer like that and I could eliminate those others number three land heats up faster during the day than the water does as the beach gets warm during the day it heats the air above it the warm air rises and cool air from the ocean is pulled in to replace it so I'm kind of picturing my water I've got over here some sand. I remember the heat rising. I remember the cold air sinking in that convection cell. I remember that being a sea breeze. So air flows from the ocean to land. At night, so I need to draw the nighttime picture too. At night, I know that that's going to be opposite because cold air is over the land at night because the sand is cold and the hot air of the ocean is going to rise. What will most likely happen to the air at the beach at night? Okay, here's my night time. So, okay, day and night. What will happen to the air? All right, well, I know that the air is not still. The air moves along the coast. No. 
from the ocean to the land from the ocean that's here and they're asking at night so that is not the answer from the land to the ocean I like that I'm gonna check my memory dump on that just to make sure I could put arrows on this, huh? From here to here. I'm going to change the air direction from here to here. Huh? I even made a mistake in my memory dump, but that's okay. Because I'm able to go back and figure that out using that. Yeah, I'm fairly confident in that answer. I like D. Oh, sweet. Two questions in a row that deal with this picture. Why winds at the beach change direction between day and night? What is the difference between day and night? Um, because the temperatures over the land and the water change. Well, yeah, the land is hot during the day. And the land is cooler at night. I like that answer, but I'm going to read them all. Because warm air over land sinks. Who warm air sinks. No, warm air always rises. That's not the answer. Because cool air rises. Uh, nope, cool air sinks. That is not correct. That's wrong. And that's wrong. Because cool air sinks, I like that, and stays in place. You know, the cool air would warm up and then rise. It would keep that in that um, convection cell. I don't like that. I think I like this answer the best. That's cool. That one picture answered two questions. I like that. Number five, what will most likely result from low pressure? Ah, I had low. Hmm, is that right? Low is cold. No, I remember Mr. Bullens taught me that is not correct. Mr. Bullens said that low and high are kind of like the opposite of what you're thinking about. Or something else. Let's see, low meant... Lousy, which could be rainy or snow, and high is different than what you think. It doesn't mean hot, it means cool, clear skies, sunny. All right, now I go back and I remember low pressure is here. Low pressure. Warm temperatures? Maybe. Cloudy conditions? Ooh, lousy. Mm, that's better than warm temperatures. So I don't like that. I like this one better. Clear? Well, I said clear here, so that's definitely not it. Cool? I said cool here. That's not it. Really, the only way I'm going to have a lousy, rainy, or snowy day is with cloudy conditions. I think this is my best answer. And it is the best answer. Which statement best describes temperature patterns in areas along the equator? I'm going to check my memory dump on that. Here's my equator and it is hot at the equator. Let's see what they say here. Temperatures vary from hot in the summer to cold in the winter. Um, no. That is us. That's the mid latitudes. That's us. That's the U.S. So I know that's not the answer. I don't like that. That's not a good answer. Temperatures only are consistently warm all year. Oh, yeah. Cool all year? I know that's not it. I wish it said hot. But B is the best answer. The best answer. Seven, which statement best describes temperature patterns in the mid-latitudes? Man, I love this. I can just keep going back. All right, mid-latitudes, that's me, because there's the mid-latitudes and there's the United States. Let's see, mid-latitudes. Hot in the summer to cold in the winter. That sounds like a winter, because that's us. It's... I mean, I was outside the other day and it was not warm. And a few days ago I was outside and it wasn't cool. That doesn't make sense. I like my seasons in the middle latitudes. Those are the same answers, aren't they? 
same exact answers, completely different question. Hmm. Hopefully I would catch that on a test if it happened that way. Why is, how can, how is wind predictable? That's a tough, what best describes why wind is predictable? Caused by differences in air pressure. Might have to do with unequal heating. Ooh, this. Wind moves from high pressure to low pressure. I like that. Let's see if that's one of my answers. Low altitude to areas of high altitude. Well, hot air rises and cold air sinks. That's a maybe. I'm going to put a maybe beside that. Maybe. Air moves from high pressure to low pressure. Ooh, that is exactly what I had in my notes. Well, that might have been a maybe, but I really like this answer now. It moves from low to high. So when I let the balloon go, air goes in the balloon. No, that doesn't make sense. This is my best answer. I think that works out well. All right, here we go. Prevailing westerlies. What direction? Shoot, I forgot but I did my memory dump. Prevailing westerlies. Oh, look at that. I've already underlined it once, and now I see it again west to east. Let's see if that's one of my answers. Please be one of the answers. East to west. No, that's backwards. West to east. Yes. North to south makes no sense. I like a B. Which term best describes the type of wind most likely be present while playing on a sunny beach during the day? During the day. I think I just drew that. Daytime. This is a sea breeze. Sea breeze. Because the air rises above. Make sure I draw that to make sure I'm right. Cold air sinks during the day. Hot air rises off the land during the day. And my winds move in that direction. Yep, that's sea breeze. I know that's the answer. Hurricane is not even a decent answer. They might trick me with that, but I'm not going to let them. Ooh, I hate these, which is not true, meaning three are going to be true about wind speed and direction. Winds are caused by the uneven heating of the Earth's surface. Go back to my winds. Winds. Differences in air pressure. Ooh, unequal heating of the land. Oh, that's a truth, so I can cross that out, because that doesn't make sense. Differences in air pressure. You know what? I've read that like 10 times. Just talked about the balloon. I know that that's not an answer. Changes in humidity. That is not true. Not true. Be careful on those kind of questions. It's really easy to circle one of those true answers. Which kind of weather change will occur with an increase in air pressure? So I have low air pressures, high air pressures. And to increase, it's going this way, moving towards this. It means it's getting higher. Higher. High pressure, happy weather. Happy weather, happy weather, happy weather. I don't know that. H and high. H is happy. Um, warmer and moisture. Well, moisture could be more... And I remember saying it would be cool, so that's not it. Hotter and stormier, that's lousy, that's low pressure. Colder and rainier, rain is lousy, that's not it. Cooler and drier, I'll take a cool dry day, that is my answer. And that is how I would use my memory dump in conjunction with my notes in order to go through and annotate the test questions.